I identify yourself, please, huh? Yeah, I'm Charmaine Dea Gracias of NHK. Sir, if I may ask on the South China Sea issue, um, where do you see now the relations with, uh, with China, our relations with China stand? And um, will you continue to take up this issue in international fora, such as um, the upcoming ASEM and uh, EAS? And of course, um, what's up now with the it-lost track that you have been saying before? Sorry, what was the last part of the question? The it lost track, the international tribunal and the law of the sea. Sorry, can I start with the... Yeah. You know, I'm having a little difficulty answering your question because we're giving the roadmap of how to deal with the problem and giving the other side uh, a preview of everything that we will do, which will make uh, the discussions that much harder. But can I just say this now? In terms of it lost, it is still being studied by our consultants. Uh, there are several law firms that we are consulting, conversion, very well thought of and experts in international law to precisely chart the course of how we will utilize the legal procedures and international law to advance our claims. Um, there is some degree of change in terms of uh, a little bettering of the situation. And I have to emphasize a little bettering of the situation compared to where it was at the height of the tensions. But we're still a long way off from really um, Getting back to where it was. You know. We are still hoping that we will uh, resolve this uh, amicably, uh, that uh, reasonable voices uh, will prevail, and that uh, both sides are really geared towards arriving at a solution that will satisfy not just the bilateral concerns, but more importantly, I guess, the multilateral concerns affecting this issue. So will you take it up um, in ASEM or in the upcoming EAS in uh, Cambodia? Well, there is a, an ongoing effort no, to come up with a consensus as six points uh, spearheaded by the Foreign Minister of Indonesia, and we are supporting the same. What about the meeting with Wen Jiabao in East Asia Summit, in the sidelines of East Asia? Would you seek a meeting there, with him? There is, no, there is no agreement to have a, side, a meeting on the sidelines right? Sir, Pro, at this point. We're, we're, we're going to New Zealand and Australia, and those are yeah. the meetings that we are setting up. Yeah, since you've mentioned so, Australia, I, yeah, I'll just one quick follow-up. Just on Australia, okay. because you are going to Australia, we now have um, a status of visiting forces agreement with Australia. What role do you really see Australia will be playing in regional security, and what kind of engagement or partnership do you want the Philippines to have with, um, with, Malaysia, uh, with uh, Australia? Well, there is, um, we, we offered Australia actually a strategic partnership. We only have two strategic partnerships, one with the United States of America and the other with uh, Japan. We are offering the third to Australia. They are presently studying it. But even in the absence of that, they are already helping us with the Coast Watch system. There is various trainings being conducted by the military and security forces uh, with our own personnel uh, in the form of um, scholarships. No? enrollment in the various institutions. Um, so um, we, we, have, we share the same values. We're both democracies. We, we have uh, been normally on the same side of uh, issues uh, that have confronted our respective peoples since um, at least World War II, uh, the Korean War, the Vietnam War. Uh, we face the same challenges, be it terrorism, global climate change, um, relationships with uh, the superpower in the neighborhood. So all of this lends to shared values, uh, in a sense, shared background, and therefore it uh, promotes no, closer, and should promote closer cooperation between our peoples. Thank you. Thank you. Dario. Mr. President, my name is Dario of Kyodo News, Japanese news agency. Uh, Prime Minister Najib, during his uh, speech, uh, during the signing in Malacanang, mentioned something about Sabah, the Sabah issue. I was just wondering if the Sabah issue uh, in what uh, was brought up during your bilateral meeting with him, and in, in what context was it uh, discussed? Well, the majority of the discussion had to deal with the MILF, then the, uh, the other aspects of uh, ensuring that all of the other stakeholders you know, uh, will be brought in in a consensus. Um, Sabah was talked of almost fleetingly, so we, we, there were no substantial discussions with regards to Sabah. So the territorial dispute about the territorial dispute in Sabah was never. It, it, it will not, it is uh, dormant at this point in time, unless you inflame it. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Sir, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Celerina Monte from the Daily Manila Shimbun. Uh, sir, congratulations for the framework agreement with the MILF. Sir, how far or up to what extent could the government, uh, your administration, could give way for the power and wealth sharing to MILF, with the MILF? In, in power and, well, power, I think, is clearly defined already. Um, it's, we're already in the nuances stage. You know? For instance, uh, in territorial waters, um, or municipal waters extend up to about 15 kilometers from the coastline. They, would, uh, they, are, they want some say beyond the 15 kilometer baseline. That affects uh, not just uh, what is now the arm, no? but other areas within the country. So that is subject to further negotiations when we tackle the details in the annex. In wealth sharing, um, there will be a balance no? between their needs and, uh, of course, at the onset, it will be the national government that will be funding a lot of the activities that they, they would be undertaking. So we will, I cannot give you specific percentages right now, but the concept is in the same token that the, the rest of the country will be helping them through this transition, perhaps we can also expect them to help the rest of the country once they have their feet uh, firmly planted on the ground. So. I think there is a broad consensus of, of what these percentages are, but uh, we will have to wait until the final details uh, that will exist in the annexes of the agreement. But the MILF will get the bigger mm. share, sir? Yeah, as I, I said, no. let us finish the details before I announce it. Sir, another thing. Uh, regarding the, the NPA, how optimistic are you that um, you could also sign um, peace agreement with the communist rebels? Well, the other day I was told that uh, they are renewing uh, dialogue with us. There is, uh, am I as optimistic? I, I tend to be pessimistic in the sense of preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. No? Uh, in this case, I will not change that venue. But there, there is some uh, reason to believe that uh, we are moving along in terms, we're moving forward rather, in terms of the dialogue and, and uh, the aim of, uh, well, the efforts that they're trying to achieve uh, settlement also with the CPP and PNDF. But at this point in time, I cannot tell you that there is a fixed date already when we will announce anything. We're uh, moving forward where it, pre it was previously, it had stagnated. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Stop. Go ahead. Good morning, Mr. President. Melo Acuna from China Radio International. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas reported that uh, foreign direct investment inflows to the Philippines between January to August this year amounted to over a billion dollars. However, that amount reached Thailand in January alone. So Vietnam, despite the downturn, uh, remi remains optimistic they'll get eight billion before year end. May we have your projections and probably the reasons why we failed to attract more FDIs? Well, there is a question exactly of uh, our reporting. You know, in Secretary Greg Domingo always brings this up. No? that uh, it seems that what we do report versus the actual investments seem to not correlate. No? There seems to be a significant error. But be that as it may, um, may I say that if there are, the other countries are way ahead of us in terms of foreign direct investment, it's just merely a, a continuation of uh, there being more ahead of us in effecting the necessary changes no? that led them to be attractive to begin with, specifically for Thailand. No? Now, um, I think it is, if you, if you could only have been a party to all of the foreign businessmen, as well as local businessmen that have been paying courtesy costs on us and how bullish they are on our country, then uh, I think it is not too shabby a performance for uh, the, the two years that they have suddenly decided to take a second look at us. But be that as it may, um, the figure that is cited, there is some question which NEDA is trying to address in terms of actually and accurately collecting the data with regards specifically to foreign direct investment. Yes, Mr. President, uh, do you have any policy about electric power rates? Because both foreign and local businessmen have been complaining that we're second to Japan. Yeah, I think if I mentioned it publicly from the time I was running even for the Senate, and especially after I assumed office, there are two tracks. First is, and that which we are, I think, have accomplished substantially, increase the power supply. Mm -hmm. no? and increase the power supply everywhere, but most importantly for Mindanao, which is a very, very small surplus or reserve. No? After, you have, um, after you have that adequate supply, then the feasibility of competition happening 
in the spot market, you know, which will bring down the prices more reasonably, becomes a reality. We're waiting for certain actions from the ERC to have the full implementation of uh, that competitive spot market. Yes. One last point, Mr. President, if you may. What specific orders have you given law enforcement agencies to rid the country of private armed groups considering the coming elections in May 2013? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for answer, asking that question. We've been on a program to dismantle these private armed groups, I think not less than four months, meaning that was the time that uh, they actually went on operations to dismantle. I don't have the figures right now for how many groups have been dismantled or how many people have been arrested. But um, suffice to say that it's an ongoing effort. Uh, there's a validation of the order of battle. And uh, I think not a week goes by without a, a report on specific armed groups that have already been dismantled. A lot of them were in, I'm talking on the top of my head, but the first reports were both in the Cordillera and in Central Luzon. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank President. You. Yeah, Simone. Good morning, Mr. President. I'm Simone Orendine. I'm here for um, Voice of America. This is a follow-up to an earlier question. You had said that there's some degree of change and a little bettering of the situation with China. Can you please be a little more specific about that and um, what your concern is with trying to make that a bigger bettering? Well, um, we recognize the fact that they're undergoing a transition, which hopefully will happen by the end of November, where there hopefully will be less uh, nationalistic pressures on whoever uh, the leadership will be. But uh, the little warming up is that they've initiated dialogue with us, um, initially at Vladivostok, but that didn't push through, but subsequently at the China ASEAN Expo. However, the, the messages were practically the same, although there were some differences. That's why I said that uh, there seems to be um, grad a very gradual warming up. I want to be very precise. So we are hopeful that this gradual warming up will be uh, really warmed up by the time of the transition. So we're taking a wait and see attitude also. Is there any, this is kind of a difficult question, but it seems in these kinds of territorial disputes, countries will stick to what their line is and the other one will do the same, sounding kind of like you're both having still your same messages. Uh, how do you see a situation like this changing and progressing forward? Well, if we were to return to what it was before the conflict on Bajo de Masinloc happened, then that is a very significant improvement. That actually is a modus vivendi arrived at by, I guess, by custom and by uh, implicit agreement, although there were no formal um, agreements to the same. But uh, we go back to their statements about adhering to international law, which are we have also, which is also the position we have adopted from from the very beginning. And uh, specifically, we both mentioned UNCLOS, and we're both signatories to UNCLOS and the various other treaties. So we recognize the political dimension, especially for Asians of saving face. But uh, at the end of the day, we all are committed to improving the lot of our people, and that will not happen in a, in a situation or an atmosphere that is tense and uncertain. And one, one other question, hmm? kind of not related. We'll get back to you if you have oh. another question. Okay, yeah. sure. Huh? Okay. We'll get back to you. Get Ellen. Hi. Good morning, Mr. President. Sir, regarding again the South China Sea. Uh, Identify uh, yourself, please. Sir, uh, in the, past, in the past days, uh, uh, with the uh, event about Senator Chirlianis, it seems that the government is jeering or favoring bilateral talks with China instead that, of... That, that is not correct. In bilateral, so, sir, can be a component, explain. but multilateral is the approach. The problem is multilateral. In ASEAN alone, there are four countries of the ten who are claimants to the Spratis group. So how can two... Talk, well, how can one of the four mm -hmm. talk with China and bind the other three? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you're still uh, 
uh, stressing multilateral talks with China. Multilateral problem only gets addressed if the parties are, uh, are if, multi, if, if the format is multilateral mm -hmm. and binds everybody. Otherwise, <coughs> you settle a portion of the problem and you retain the rest of the problem. Sir, but how about the, the fact that China is still there in Bajo de Masinlok? How about the fact that Chinese ships are still there? The, how do you, how, how are you approaching this problem? This but lingering problem. They, they left, they came back, they left, and we also believe in freedom of navigation. But the, the whole point of the exercise is from the start has been from our end, not to escalate the conflict, mm -hmm. but to de-escalate it. But at some point in time, we do have to defend, our, and we are defending our interests now, but we, have, we might have to defend it more vigorously. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean we take it up in the international fora, uh, mm -hmm. the adjudicating tribunals that are already mm -hmm. stated under international law. So how about our ships? Will we return our ships there in Bajo de Masinlo? Again, I'm really not comfortable by telegraphing our intentions to the other side. I think you can understand that. Sir, thank you. Okay, Ellen, thank, thank you. you. Yes. Oh, good morning, Mr. President. Uh, morning. My name is Kantaro Suzuki from the Daily Manjushima Japanese newspaper. Well, uh, my question is about the territory of the Bansamoro. The Territory. The, Bangsawara, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. MOA, MOA, MOA AD in 2008, it was the, the, the Palawan was included in the, as an agreement in 2008, but the, this time a framework agreement doesn't uh, include the Palawan as a territory of the Bansamoro. Could you explain why, you know, the, why the, the, the Palawan was excluded this time, even though, even though there's a still the chance to become part of the Bansamoro? Is it because the it becomes a problematic uh, if if the Bansamoro claims uh, Palawan as a part of the Bansamoro. No, they they stated that the recognized people who had traced their ancestry to the areas enumerated as part of the Bansamoro peoples. Now I think it is a significant concession on the part of the MILF. Uh, uh, twofold. No? One is a limitation of the areas that um, that they have. Uh, they, they want as part of the new uh, political entity. But more importantly, the concession also that everybody will have to give their consent uh, by way of a plebiscite and decision whether to opt in into this new uh, political entity. So um, it, it is, uh, again, indicative of uh, their, their desire to really achieve a just uh, settlement to the lingering issues which have taken almost two generations already of our, of our countrymen. So, yeah, we, I think it should be pointed out that it is a, a very mature perspective and it is a, a very doable perspective you know, in, in terms of delineating the territory that they would want to be part of the new political entity. And this resulted obviously from a lot of negotiations. I think we had 13 uh, talks during our time. Thank you. Uh, more question. Like, uh, what kind of the support? Uh, what kind of support uh, would you expect from the Japanese government before the Bansamo, tra uh, Bansamo uh, Transition Authority is established in 2016? So, well, um, first, the first time I met with the chairman Murad was in Tokyo. That already they're part of the international uh, contact, contact, contact group. Contact group. Um, they, they were, we asked them if they could host it, and they responded very, very, in a very, very timely manner. Some, I'm not even sure if there was like a week that they, were had, that they had to prepare, perhaps just days. So, and this, that was then. Now we were, we were talking to the vice president of JICA, and uh, they've already indicated, indicated uh, the support that, that they have given in the past, but more importantly, once this is a, a the transition commission finishes its work, there's a transition authority that comes in, uh, the desire to continue assisting you know, the entire region for uh, regional stability and really to ensure that the peace lasts because people have a stake already in, um, in, their, in their governance. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, sir. I'm Dana Batnag from GG Press. My question would be a follow-up to the last question. Will the Philippines ask for additional ODA from Japan, especially for projects for the Bangsamoro region? 
δεν μου κάνει να σα πάει και τα ίδια. There are already various projects in the pipeline with them, but more importantly, by January, there's a Philippine Development Forum scheduled in January in Davao, which will uh, will talk further and more details about uh, the assistance that we will be seeking for this new political entity. Um, my other question is: There's mm. a scheduled foreign ministerial conference between Philippines and China on Friday. Uh, will the Philippines raise the issue of Scarborough Shoal or the South China Sea dispute during this meeting? What are your instructions to the DFA? There are no changes to the instructions for the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. So he has, has been party to and privy and the chief architect also in the sense of our, uh, all our steps towards resolving this issue. So there are no changes as to his instructions there. It is a continuation of the previous instructions. So, sir, will we raise the Scarborough Shoal issue in the Friday meeting? In Friday's meeting? Perhaps you should inquire from the Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning, President. I'm Emerson, Central News Agency of Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan and Philippines are neighbors, and there are about 90,000 Filipinos working in Taiwan. And Taiwan and Philippines are top five trade partners to each other. And Taiwan is interested in uh, having a free trade agreement with the Philippines to further enhance the trade relations. What is your position on this, sir? We are precluded from uh, entering into a free trade agreement with uh, Taiwan, primarily because of the one China policy. But uh, there have been economic uh, meetings you know, between, our, uh, between the Philippines and Taiwan that uh, seeks to even broaden and perhaps uh, um, induce the return of previous investors you know, who for one reason or another left the Philippines. And I understand or I'm made to understand that there have been very significant developments as far as that aspect is concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. <coughs> Sir, Joel. Joel Ginta from Bloomberg. Sir, you're approaching the middle of your term. Have you increased tax collection efficiency enough to hold off uh, new taxes? And will there be a review of your policy not to impose new taxes? <laughs> the only tax where uh, we want imposed or we want an, or an increase of is the sin tax. Um, issue. Um, okay, we started the 13 percent, uh, 13, 13 to GDP, 13 percent uh, tax collection efficiency measured against GDP. We're now at 15. The target is 18. So yes, uh, tax administration has improved under our watch by a significant two percent. Okay. Will it be enough to stay uh, As I said in my speech, the cost of borrowing is low. There will be, perhaps, um, it would be the reverse that we are uh, a little bit apprehensive of. You know, we are a magnet for a lot of investments, and if we, if we don't have the capacity to absorb, then that will be an inflationary pressure. But so far, the Banco Central has been doing its job adequately, and we're trying to accelerate the, you know, the processes involved in government to be able to respond to all of these infusions from so many sectors. Sir, what is the government doing to ensure that the version of the syntax law will deliver uh, adequate revenues? What are we doing to ensure? Sir, because the version of Senator Recto, uh, the committee report is only half of the <coughs> revenue that would be, we would get from the House version of the bill. Well, we are meeting with the senators. The executive is meeting with the senators. Uh, they asked for specific... Um, Members of the executive, the secretary of finance, uh, the BIR commissioner, and the department of health. And the department of health no? We'll be meeting with the senators in the caucus at three, three o'clock this afternoon, precisely to again 
uh, state our positions with regards to the rates and various other details of the syntax question. Thank you. Good, uh, good morning, Mr. President. I'm Jam from Al Jazeera. Just, we'd just like to go back to the Mindanao issue. Now that the framework agreement has been signed, um, obviously the, the ceasefire is going to be in place until the transitional mechanism becomes um, successful. Just, sir, we just want to ask you, how do you intend to deal with the insurgency still that's a problem in Mindanao? The BIFF is still there, uh, still quite a you know, significant and worrying force. Um, in an interview with uh, Al Jazeera once, um, uh, Vice Chairman for Political Affairs, Jafar, actually mentioned that they are willing to go after the BIFF but are just in respect of the current discussions with, with the Philippine government, they have not done so. That's the first question. Second question would be, what are your reactions um, with the statements that the MNLF Chairman, uh, Nur Miswar, has been saying, warning of this effectively, um, what they expect? Sorry, it's going to be a, a failure, they said, of the framework agreement. He warned that this framework agreement might be a failure, considering that MNLF's agreement with uh, the, the Philippine government in, 1990, in the 1990s actually is a failed experiment. With regards to the BAFF, now we have the MILF, who are now a significant partner. They've already demonstrated um, when the BAF allegedly Know, perpetrated a lot of atrocities during the midst of these discussions. So they have contained the same. They have, uh, they have actually demonstrated their capacity to police uh, their areas. No? So it is not um, a hypothetical ex um, theory. It is an actual practice that they, they were effective in helping us maintain um, the so-called um, outbreak of violence that the BAFF was, uh, was stating. Okay. Now, uh, with regards to Chairman Miswari's uh, statements, uh, this might be a failed experiment. Um, it is in the realm of possibility, but what is reality is that the arm experiment is failed or has failed. And therefore, would it be prudent on our part to continue the failed experiment and the structures that led to a worsening of the situation? Or should we, as rational beings, you know, step back and say, where were we wrong, and how do we address and how do we correct it, so as to address the aspirations of our, our brothers in the arm or the new political entity. Mr. President, last question, though. Is there an intention to include uh, those forces that of the MNLF that are, you know, as now, as reviewed, are currently scattered because of the lack of strong leadership of the MNLF? Is there a plan in the we, future? We have, we have tried to be as inclusive as possible. Not just uh, our Muslim brothers, but also the Lumans, uh, the Christians, uh, the various civil society organizations, Akadim. You name every entity that is uh, a stakeholder, and we have tried to be as inclusive as possible. And, we, and to those that opted not to participate, we are still open to getting them to participate in the process of uh, effecting the changes. Thank you. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. President. Jason Gutierrez from Ajahn Swans Press. I've got a follow-up question to, um, to that one. Um, with a lot of these uncertainties hanging in the air, the BIFF and Nur Miswari questioning the agreement, how far down along the road will we see actual investments, real hard money pouring into Mindanao, um, but considering that the MNLF agreement in 1997 took years before they actually signed in 1996? Well, in, even in the absence of uh, this framework agreement, investments have been flowing into Mindanao. Uh, I may I ask you to visit uh, any of the other areas besides the no? Again, the Oro comes to mind, Davao comes to mind. In fact, every time I visit those areas, it seems that their landscape keeps on changing. But um, other than that, government will be, for this year, will be putting in 21. All budget, J plus. In yeah, 21 about billion. Yeah. Government is putting about 21 billion in 2012 no? for various. Uh, needs uh, in, in what is now the arm, no? be it schools, be it teachers, uh, various other infrastructure, livelihood, etc. Uh, this is about 11, I want to, can you GA, or 10, 11? 1.8. GA. So just to clarify, you said 21 billion? Billion. Billion pesos. About 21 billion. 
21 billion. This don't, don't, don't hold me to it. No? Baka naman kulang ng a few hundred million here and there. No? But roughly, it's about 21 billion. And this will be um, spent on infrastructure, airports, schools? In, in, in basic services infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other air, question air, is... No airports in ARM right now. No, that we will be improving. Not in the ARM right now. Okay. Again, you know, schools. Kaya no more go school that is populated with a ghost teacher where, which has a real student that is not getting anything, no. There's a program called uh, BEAM ARM, mm -hmm. no, which specifically addresses not just schools, li it also includes libraries, uh, madrasas, etc. Okay, um, j just in relation to that, what kind of uh, assurance can we give um, potential international investors in, in terms of security in Mindanao that the, now that the framework agreement has been signed? Again, may I just point out that uh, one group threatened to uh, unleash a lot of violence, and they were prevented by an actor that previously was not a direct partner of government, no? and it refers specifically to the MILF. So we, besides the security forces of the state, the MILF is an active, very active uh, component of preserving the peace in Mindanao. Sir, just one last question on China. Okay. Um, still in the context of the China question, um, the United States is um, planning a, a, a strategic pivot in Southeast Asia. I, mean, I, just, I, I just would like to know how, the, how do you foresee the Philippines playing a role in this entire configuration? We are allies. We are treaty allies. We have a mutual defense treaty that has existed for several decades. Um, again, we go back to their strategic partners. We have the share, shared background and shared values. So we will assist our ally. Has there been any negotiations for Subic and Clark? No, perhaps? no such thing. Thank, you, this Thank you. Yes, uh, go ahead, Rose. Uh, Rose Francisca, sir, from Reuters. Sir, how ho just a follow-up to the syntax question. How hopeful are you that it still be passed in the current Congress, given the tight legislative uh, schedule uh, for, for the remainder of uh, this Congress before the elections? And do you have a plan B as to what, uh, you, what the government can do to raise taxes uh, to ra or raise revenues? Uh, You've said that we've raised uh, the tax to GDP rate to 15%, but it's not enough to impress credit rating agencies so as to raise our uh, ratings to investment grade. I think you just answered the question. Elections. Uh, there are several senators who are opting to, uh, to run for next year's elections. Uh, incumbent senators who will ask for re-election. And how can anybody say that they are uh, opposed to an effective syntax measure. Uh, that is uh, very impolitic. So do we need a plan B in terms of if it, not, it doesn't pass? I really am confident that it will pass. No? We have, uh, we have uh, stated the same to our allies in the Senate of how important this measure is, as well as the AMLA measure, amongst others. No? Will it pass given the tightness of the schedule? I think there is sufficient time to really thresh out all of the details and come up with something that, is, uh, that they can fully support. Okay? Um, I'm sorry, what was the second question? Uh, sir, raising, I was asking about raising revenues further uh, mm. because at this point, credit rating agencies are not impressed enough to uh, raise our credit ratings to investment grade. Also, sir, on that can, note... Can I ask Secretary yes. Purisima to answer this because I can feel he's so itching <coughs> to answer that particular question. I think he disagrees with uh, your assessment of the credit rating agencies. I, I think the market disagrees with the credit rating agencies. The market rates us at two notches above investment grade right now and uh, based on bond implied ratings. And I think the Philippines is the most underrated uh, country uh, if you compare bond implied ratings against credit rating uh, uh, agencies. Now, I think uh, that's the most important uh, point. The second is they've had eight positive uh, credit ratings actions since the Aquino administration uh, uh, took uh, over. And third, uh, we've been able to create uh, a lot of increases in um, uh, education, 33% since President Aquino took over, health, uh, 63% since Aqu uh, President Aquino took over, CCT, 295% increase, and yet we still have a lot of fiscal space. No? So I don't really know what their 
are referring to. Deputy GDP. Deputy GDP has gone down. Just a follow-up. Sir, how important is it to, get, to bag that investment uh, grade credit rating? And is it a priority for the government to get that, let's say, in the next six months? Are we doing something? You know, especially uh, for those who are, who are not aware of us at this point in time, that induces them to take a look at us. But as Secretary Purisma stated, no, we are getting terms for our loans that are better than investment grade. So I won't be complaining that we're getting even better, you know, better terms than what we would have if we had the investment grade. So we're, I think we're tackling a triviality in a sense, no? mm -hmm. rather than the important issue. The reality is we are uh, we are securing debt with lesser interest, which redounds to more impact for our people. And sir, just one more question. One more question on the, another matter on mining, sir. Uh, mining reform. You mentioned it in your sauna that you want to uh, raise tax, the, raise the mining tax. Uh, it wasn't taken up by this Congress. Will you, will you ask the next Congress to make it? Or will you make it a priority, uh, priority measure for the next Congress? <laughs> and another question on mining, sir. Uh, the um, uh, Sagittarius Mines has uh, filed an appeal with your office for their ECC. Are you taking it up, sir? Are you inclined to uh, uh, grant uh, their appeal for an ECC uh, in the Tampacan project, or will you be more inclined to probably reject or deny it? Well, again, um, first, first in terms of revenues, no? we, our position is government gets something like less than 10% of what they make. But we have 100% if there is a problem that crops up. Meaning, for instance, one of the oldest firms, mining firms in the country, suffered multiple uh, failings of their tailing, uh, failures of their tailings fund. You know? And uh, that redounds to quite a significant impact on the environment. Um, I, we still stick with our position that there has to be a reformulation of the governing law with regards to the mining industry. And uh, we would rather not uh, continue the situation or also the risks until um, the remedies or the corrections in the mining laws will be corrected. So subject to review, I think the, the safest position would be to await um, this new amendments, not the amendments to the law, so that we don't um, grant something that we we would be changing almost as soon as we granted it. So, sir, just to, just to clarify, uh, <laughs> your last last sentence, is that referring to Tampakan, meaning they have to wait for the new law? Is that it? For for uh, for their... That is, that is a statement in general about the mining industry. And if it will be defined as a new operation, then it will fall into that category. Okay, Rose. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Good morning, President. And uh, I'm sorry for there are so many questions about China today, but I think my question won't be so difficult to answer. Uh, my question is that we know that there is a, a big uh, major power transition will come in. And uh, my question is, do you have any expectation for the next Chinese general leaders? Well, again, as I stated, uh, there will be pressures leading up to the transition. We hope that these pressures domestic pressures in China will be lessened after the transition so that uh, we can, we, we would have more room uh, to, this, to, to negotiate and to discuss in more reasonable terms and less, uh, uh, less ultra-nationalist tones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. President, Carl Malakunas from Agence France Press. Um, my question is in regards to cybercrime law. Um, just in, in regards to your mantra over your term of to improve human rights uh, in the Philippines, how does um, opening the path um, and allow, allowing uh, people to be jailed for posting um, defamatory comments online improve the human rights situation in the Philippines? Okay. Well, can I just state for the record, in, as the chief executive of this land, when the proposed measure was brought before me, I have uh, basically two options. If I agree, under the Constitution, if I agree with the same, I sign it into law. If I disagree with the same, I veto everything. No, I, cannot, I only have a line veto on the budget measure. I don't have a line veto on other, other measures. So if I really fail to sign the law, then 
uh, the provisions on identity fraud or to prevent uh, identity fraud, um, the the porn, the the other other aspects sought to be penalized by this law um, would have been left again in limbo. Can I just give you an example? No? Um, we have a wire anti wire tapping act. I think it's a Republic Act 4200. Uh, crafted sometime in the early 60s. It contains, it, it defines how do you, um, the devices that, uh, that you can use, how do you commit the crime. Unfortunately, most of the enumerated uh, methods of wire tapping no longer exist. And perhaps those of us who are younger in this room will not even know what a dictaphone is. But these are the <laughs> type of uh, items that uh, are in the law, but uh, not necessarily existing in reality. In fact, juris our jurisprudence says that unless there's a physical wire that you actually tap into, then you cannot be guilty of wire, wire tapping or illegal wire tapping. We now have the internet. No? Um, my position is simple. Uh, when, I I, when I read the law, and I read it, I think, three times, or the proposed measure, it just said that uh, there's an existing provision of, on libel in the revised penal code. And libel through print should a, a libelous statement in print that is sanctioned should also be a libelous statement in the broadcast media should also if it is the, still the same statement existing on the net should also still be libelous now there shouldn't be an exam, exemption if uh, based on what format may now uh, the issue is increased penalties etc um, the arbitrary closing etc yeah the IRR, the implementing rules and regulations, have to be have to be crafted, and that's when we can, we can solicit, for, especially from those who are reasonable uh, individuals, to perfect that which is made by an imperfect being, which is man. No. So we are open to having amendments to it. The executive's function is to enforce the law. No. We cannot choose not to enforce a law that is existing. So does, how how does it can it just finish? How does it enhance? Uh, we are taught when we were in, in the elementary, we all have freedom of speech, but our freedoms and all our rights are also guarded by the rights of others. When they impinge on the rights of others, then there are practical limitations. The oft-cited example is when you're in a movie house. You don't have the freedom of speech to say that there's a fire when there isn't any. So I think um, the discourse should, should also be cognizant of the rights of all parties, and not just that of the, of the blogger. And, and in regards to the penalties, are you personally in favour of people being jailed for defamation or libel, whether it's in on the internet or in print? Should people should that be a criminal offence, or should it just be as in um, you know, uh, the US and uh, other other major countries um, a, um, a a civil um, problem? I'm, I'm divided between sometimes the personal side and the public side. But I think I, I, I fully subscribe to the idea of decriminalizing it, but decriminalizing, but not uh, uh, not not lessening the atmosphere to encourage irresponsibility in certain quarters. So you're, you're pers you are personally in favour of, of of decriminalizing. Yes. Thank you. Wait, uh, Manny. Sure. Very good Next morning. Is, uh, Associated Press. We haven't heard from uh, Manny Mulato from Reuters. So just a quick follow-up on Carl's question. Is this not an attempt by government to put the genie back in the bottle by uh, reining in uh, attempt uh, on, online uh, freedom of expression? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sir, is this not an attempt by government to... Uh, curtail uh, freedom of expression the, by putting in the libel uh, provision in the cybercrime law? Putting in the libel provision is not an accurate statement. It just states that under uh, the revised penal code, no, postings on the net are also subject to that provision. I think the number is section 355 or something like that. No? It's already existing. So uh, do we want to curtail uh, freedom of speech? Yes. I, uh, you, I think, will be the, the, one of the primary witnesses of how, you know, how pervasive freedom of speech is in this country. So I think that's a, a, an invalid question. 
Okay. And anyway, sir, my question is uh, on the... And it's, not really long, no? it's not an urgent bill. It, we didn't, it didn't come from us. No? Although our uh, law enforcement agencies were saying that there is difficulty when they arrest uh, people engaged in fraud in particular. We have been deporting hundreds no, of people engaged in, in cyber crime, especially in internet fraud. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, my real question is on the... <laughs> <laughs> It's on the Bank Samoro Framework Agreement. Uh, do you see any potential risk that could derail the implementation of the agreement? Because uh, from the time it was signed on Monday and the actual uh, uh, creation of a new Bank Samoro government that will take some more time and we will have elections next year, what's the guarantee that the new Congress would approve it in record time as we have seen in the past? Both parties to the agreement recognize no, that we will have to go through the constitutional processes. There are certain risks involved. But I think what you should highlight is the fact that both parties are committed no, to delivering as much as possible that which is, that which is within their capabilities. Okay? So um, instead of being negative about it, shouldn't we be positive that both parties are already exhibiting a high degree of trust and cooperation towards achieving the mutually agreed upon names. And how soon do we expect the EO creating the Transition Commission? They're drafting it right now, I just have to read it again. So okay. before the end, the end of the year, we'll, we'll see a commission working I, I wanna, on... I want to produce it as soon as possible. Can Thank I you. give you a Thank specific you. timeline? I don't have the draft yet. How can I tell you that I will issue it the following day? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank you. Go ahead. Mr. President, uh, my name is Kiersi Crowley from Finnish Broadcasting Company, Finland. Uh, my question regards uh, the framework agreement as well. Um, at which point of this process would you see MILF fighters laying down their arms? And what options have been discussed um, in terms of uh, how would they be rehabilitated as part of the new structures? Uh, can I answer the second portion of the question? We were, um, that was actually when we had a, a short conversation with uh, Chairman Murad before the actual signing. He did say that uh, their, their fighters should, should be made to feel that it, this was a right, um, a de right decision on their part. So they, they sh there should be benefits you know, that they, they would accrue from entering into this framework agreement. To which I responded by, perhaps you have a priority list. You know your people better, what they're capable of right now. And we will <clears throat> go through your priority list and implement it as far as practicable to, uh, in the schedule and the items that you want to do. Um, Dean Leonen is still in, in contact with them to precisely come up with that list of how to transform the fighters in, into, to reintegrate them into society. Okay. Um, with regards to the, to the first question. The first question was about uh, at which point of the process. Ah, the, link, the specifics of that will still have to be worked out. No? But they recognize that they, we, were, we were, were talking so many details. No? For instance, uh, one of the items that really have to be negotiated further is uh, the regional police force relationship also with in the details of the relationship with the National Police Commission, the National PNP, etc. Um, then that will naturally have to, uh, the timetables, uh, areas, persons, etc. starts with an inventory. Uh, it is, I think it is noteworthy to be able to say that they are already discussing the details of that, although there are no, no firm timelines that have been established now. But um, I think if part of the agreement states that once um, the new, uh, the, not the transitional authority, but the new government gets uh, empowered through an elections by 2016, then they cease to exist as an armed force, or to a large degree cease to exist as an armed force. But that will be contingent also on their ability to defend themselves, the trust that will be engendered, uh, the policing of their area, and so on and so forth. So I think it would be unfair at this point in time to tie them down to specific timelines, given that they're still nebulous as to who takes over uh, their internal security. But have you heard any preferences from MILF about in terms of uh, what their troops, uh, what their uh, fighters would be doing in the future? 
Um, perhaps Chairman Murad was very cautious, but he didn't indicate specifically what. But he did mention but there are vast tracts of land that are not cultivated at this point in time. A lot of it, a delta area which is very fertile. So I assume that a lot of the a lot of it will deal with both agriculture and aquaculture. So they would become farmers. Farmers, fisher <laughs> folk, efficient farmers. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Tess. Hi, sir. I'm Tess Rohana from Associated Press. Just a follow up to the questions earlier. What issues uh, do you think would be the most tricky in the negotiations ahead, and uh, what is your greatest fear of? the process being derailed. You know, let's, let's go back to where we started from. There was that issue of state-sub-state relationships. Now that has been translated into an asymmetrical relationship. That is significant concession on their part. Um, they, initially, they wanted an expansion of the territory. They now recognize that uh, perhaps it would be best no, not to afford that opportunity to opt in, but not to, to demand so many but a greater addition to their particular territory. So I guess as far as the MILF is concerned, no, I'm very, very optimistic. Remember that uh, from, yeah, okay, okay. they split up from the MLF in 1984. Uh, the previous administration took almost 10 years to get nowhere. No. We have this agreement in about, roughly about 14 months. I met uh, Chairman Murad August of 2011. So in about 14 months, we have really made significant, we have achieved significant agreements as far as the goals no, of uh, this exercise are concerned. Makes me therefore optimistic that, uh, in, I will not say that we guarantee that in, we finish all of the details soon, but we are both focused on achieving a consensus rather than be caught in a dogmatic, ideologic battle where nobody gives in. Sir, on another topic, uh, <coughs> are back-channel talks with China uh, not being pursued anymore? Is uh, Senator Trillianes still uh, uh, given the assignment to do that? Excuse me. No, I, ask, I thank Senator Trillianes for all of his efforts. Currently, there are, uh, there are no back-channel efforts. No? Uh, there was a semi-formal or formal meeting between Secretary Rojas and, um, and, a, and a senior Chinese official during the ASEAN Expo, China ASEAN Expo. Thank you. Thank you. Now go ahead, please. Uh, hi, Mr. President. Uh, uh, my name is Minoru Satake from Nikkei, in Japanese newspaper. Uh, my question is regarding the GDP growth. Uh, I think uh, uh, this year's uh, target of government is 5 to 6 percent. Uh, so uh, do you have any uh, plan to revise the forecast of the GDP growth? Or in other words, uh, do you have uh, an aspiration to reach the 7 or 8 percent of uh, GDP growth? Of course. Of course, we'll always have that aspiration. <laughs> no? But our economy is not isolated from the global economy. There are pressures, for instance, on our exporters, given that the, the markets that they export to are experiencing, um, should say, intense economic difficulties, no? and also our trading partners. But um, we are confident that we will uh, achieve the target of between 5 to 6 percent. We actually did 6.3 in the first quarter, 5.9 in the second quarter. So you average for the second semester, for the first semester, the average is 6.1. So we're beyond the target. And I keep telling my economic cluster, if they err on that, no, in that manner, wherein they predict less than what we actually achieve, I will not be mad at them. Thank you. They're all good. OK, fine. Uh, Cecil? Cecil Morales, sir, of the French News Agency. If I could just bring it back to Tampakan, because you didn't answer the question. Uh, I, I think it's the, potentially the largest investment in the Philippines, $5.9 billion. And I think they were under, the company was under the impression that uh, the government was due to decide at the end of this month their ECC, as well as their appeal for the overturning of the, the ban on uh, open pit mining in uh, Cotabato, Cotabato. 
Again, I, I don't have that confidence no, at this point in time that the existing laws no, do adequately protect our environment or do we adequately share the resource that belongs to the people of this country. Okay. So, uh, if, you, if, we, if you go into a partnership and you get less than 10%, how long will you be satisfied in that partnership? When you talk of investments of that magnitude, exactly how much of these investments will redound to more jobs, uh, not just for the initial construction phase, no, but rather for, for um, several decades that will justify the risks that we do have on the environment that is uh, at pressure or under pressure at this point in time. So again, we have a very old company that uh, is one of the, I guess, pioneers in the mining industry who had the same, uh, who had multiple failures of the tailing response. So would you want me to uh, exercise my stewardship in a reckless manner and grant all of these mining agreements left and right while no, no, uh, recognizing the fact that there are uh, inadequacies in our current systems, procedures, rules, regulations, and laws? Sir, uh, a follow-up. You suggested in, in your previous answer that uh, they would have to wait for the amendments to the mining law. Is, uh, does that refer to that, that Tampaca seems, Naso? That, that seems to be the more prudent way to look at it and the pr prudent way to undertake uh, our relationships with uh, the mining industry in okay. general. Are we not risking uh, the company backing out of the project, uh, pulling out, pulling up stakes? So, that's, that's the name of the game. No? Do I risk the environment, the health of our people, uh, the loss of our resources no? um, for some temporary gain at this point in time? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Wait, identify yourself, please. Huh? Good morning, Mr. President. I'm the journalist from Chinese Xinhua News Agency. And my question is about uh, the South China Sea, because China and the Philippines has agreed to ease the tension in uh, South China Sea. However, the Philippine government has ordered to rename part of the South China Sea as uh, Western Philippine Sea. Uh, do you think the move will uh, escalate the tension in the South China Sea? I think it, it, um, it should lessen the tension in the sense that we define what we are, we are claiming as our exclusive economic zone rather than make it undefined and increase uh, apprehensions on the other side. So this is it's, it's a starting off point so as to defining which is ours and which is not ours. And hopefully that uh, we, we can come to an agreement to perfectly delineate you know, who who is supposed to own what. And that uh, forms the basis for a negotiation. Uh, yes, however, but, but uh, uh, the West, uh, Western, Philippine, Western Philippines include uh, uh, some conflict territories. So, so, sorry, some? Uh, I mean, part of the uh, uh, Western Philippine Sea, including the conflicting uh, territories which claimed by China. Uh, you're the saying that the West territories. Philippine Sea? Yeah. Yeah. Disputive, disputive territories, yeah. Well, in, in the sense that, uh, you know, Reed Bank, for instance, is uh, 80 miles from uh, Palawan and about 570 from Hainan Island, 76 nautical, well, 570 miles or so. The exclusive economic zone is 200. China claims. Uh, well, China, uh, Chinese ships actually pushed out a uh, survey ship granted the license to explore by the Philippine government. So yes, the West Philippine Sea you know, will have areas under conflict uh, based on the actions by the People's Republic of China. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, get the last, uh, we'll get the last three questions because the president has to go. Go ahead, Tres, and then you. I'm Tres Reyes from Nikkei. Sir, uh, I have a few questions regarding uh, South China Sea. But first of all, I'd like to know, does the government, does the Philippine government have a copy of the findings of the JMSU, James. Joint Marine Seismic Undertaking? Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't ask the Secretary of Energy. I, I, I have an idea, but I want to make sure. The, Can I just give you the answer once I, am, I know for sure? Ah, okay. Uh, because it has been reported that uh, um, there is not enough oil in the Reed 
bank actually to uh, to make it possible, you know, to have commercial production in the area. And uh, has the Felix Petroleum given you a timetable for when they will actually start drilling uh, wells in the area? Because phase one of the project is supposed to be completed by August 2013. You, you know, we through the Secretary of Energy, Energy, I've asked them to, to ensure that they do not add to the tensions at this point in time. Therefore, I think they've been very cooperative in terms of their, of their scheduling you know, to, to meet the national interest, which is to de-escalate the situation. Now, with regards to the JMSU study and the, the facts that you, you seem to know of it, now I've not, uh, I don't have that copy with me. I've never read it. I have never been given any information that will support your contention. But regardless of that, whether there's oil or gas or none of the above, it is still within an exclusive economic zone, and it doesn't change the fact that we have to stand up for our rights. Uh, sir, can I just clarify? Did you say that uh, you, uh, you have asked Felix Petroleum not to go ahead with the drilling of the wells? We have asked them to coordinate precisely, you know, to coordinate with us any activities that they will undertake in the areas that might fuel uh, an escalation of the tensions we have. Uh, so, and they have, they have complied with this. Now, you know, does that translate into actually uh, para, para giving us their schedule for all of these activities? Unfortunately, the Secretary of Energy is not present. Uh -huh. He's part of the delegation to, to Italy. Uh -huh. no? Perhaps sir, I can ask him to get in touch with you. Thank you, sir. Then another question, sir, regarding the uh, uh, cabinet. Uh, it's been reported today that there is expected to be a movement in the or changes in the cabinet. Uh, can you confirm that? And uh, uh, would the uh, Secretary of Foreign Affairs be included in the, ex no such in the thing. change? No such thing. There will be no cabinet no, changes? No, SF, no changes for the Secretary of Foreign Affairs uh, portfolio. Uh, there will be some cabinet changes. We'll announce it at the appropriate time. Okay. Appropriate, sir. I have just a, just a few short questions, sir. So, but there will be some changes, but the SFA will not be included, and it will not um, uh, at any uh, near future changes. No, none. Wait, in, no, sir, because I asked because uh, prev in previous weeks there has been a lot of hullabaloo regarding the handling of the south of the discussions with uh, with China regarding the. Uh, uh, well, I, I don't agree with the dialogue that says it's the Secretary of Foreign Affairs' fault. The secretary, this Secretary of Foreign Affairs is one of the hardest working and best performing members of any cabinet that, I can, that exists in my, in my memory. You know. three, I may remind you that three days after he took his oath of office, he was already in Libya attending to the undetermined number of our countrymen who were in the midst of uh, the violence in, in Libya. And he, has, he, 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 he does not need to be prompted to do his job. No? He is very proactive. In fact, my difficulty with him is there are times when I want to talk to him and he is not here because he is attending to the concerns of his department, which necessitate a lot of interaction with foreign countries, as well as our countrymen in various, countries, yes. various other countries. So you are satisfied with, how, with the handling? I, I'm, I'm very happy. Oh. Right. So, what, why, so why was there a need, sir? Why was there a need to appoint uh, uh, Senator Trellianes, uh, which caused all the confusion about what you know, is the you know, Philippine I'm, I'm, policy with regards to China? <laughs> you know, I've answered that question so many times. Sir, not no? adequately. Because, well, for you. Because you but said, I won't debate with you. I'll answer you this time. No? Can, can I have all of your questions so that we can finish with your questions? Can are you, there any other questions? Yes, sir. Have? Uh, are you going to uh, rebid SE text? And what is the Philippines policy regarding the Trans-Pacific Partnership? TPP, uh, we're, we're still studying whether to be... Uh, timely for us to join it at this time, or because there are several conditions that uh, we are still analyzing whether or not uh, it would down to, to our benefit to engage in it at this point in time. As it takes, there's a question as to, uh, the we're reviewing it in the revenue that uh, is being proposed. 
um, in basically the, the issue revolves around our national asset being transferred uh, well um, revenue and the revenue sharing aspect of that no okay with regards to why is it why was it necessary to have a back channel because uh, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, when he meets with his counterpart, always has to do it in front of uh, the public. No? But these are formal statements. And uh, uh, we, were, we were advised by the other side that there are times when they do have you know, to, to address the needs of their constituencies and have to come up with statements that perhaps are more than their, their actual position. Hence, uh, it was getting into a more and more heated exchange as opposed to resolving the issue. And there were other avenues afforded us uh, that, um, that you know, could, could transmit the real messages or was hoped could be the conduit for the, for the real messages as opposed to the hyped up uh, exchange that was existing in, in media. All right, so we'll just have to leave it at that. I'm sir, sorry. just one last, as he text, did you say it will be rebid? Did you say that you had no, problems with that? we are reviewing the revenue sharing of the proposal of as Therefore, you may rebid. <laughs> you know, please, just listen to the answer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very short, very short questions. Huh? Go ahead. You and yes. then uh, Karen. Yes. Yeah. Very Lama. short. Okay. Uh, uh, how far have you gone, Mr. President, in your house cleaning efforts to attract more investors into the country as far as infrastructure projects are concerned? That's the first question. And wait, 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 wait. Let the President digest that okay. question first. Thank you. I'd like to preserve my voice a little. Can I ask the Secretary of Finance to answer that question? Yes, Mr. President. Well, uh, on the biggest uh, project that's now being tendered, uh, we had 33 uh, uh, entities that uh, actually bought the bid uh, uh, documents. I think uh, that's a very good uh, signal that mm -hmm. there's a lot of interest in uh, our PPP uh, projects. And this 33 is not just domestic. It's a combination of uh, domestic and foreign uh, uh, projects. No? And uh, that was also true for the first project that was bidded out, no? and uh, which was successfully uh, uh, bidded out. Yes. Uh, another question, Mr. President, is how far have you gone in working for the delineation of the Benham Rice, which is already our property, so as to forestall possible conflicts in the future? <laughs> yeah, the Secretary of uh, Natural, Environment and Natural Resources, who was lead agency for this, is right beside you. Can I ask him to answer the question? Okay. Okay. Yes, Secretary. Sir, the Benham Rise is already ours. It has been declared by the United Nations. This is an additional 13.4 uh, million hectares of continental shelf added to the Philippine territory. It's already mapped. The boundaries have been identified. It has been deposited in the United Nations. It's ours. Thank you. Thank you. Last oh. question, Mr. President. I was with you in Beijing when you made a very important declaration that your love life was zero. How is it today, Mr. President? Still zero. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wait, Karen. Karen, go ahead. Sir, good morning, Karen Reuters. Uh, actually, my question is related to the PPP. Um, are you satisfied with how the, pro the projects are progressing? Since it was announced, only two projects have been awarded. You have a new transportation secretary. Have you given any new instructions how to speed up the processes? That's my first question. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, just to state the records, uh, um, when we uh, successfully bidded out uh, uh, the Danghari Expressway, it took us 16 months. No? And when you look back at previous administrations, that was the fastest ever. Um, we do have an ambitious uh, uh, goal, and uh, what we've done is rationalized and dealt with uh, constraints. We do have an extensive pipeline already, and we're confident that uh, the bidding out of projects will be uh, regular uh, from now on. As we speak, uh, yeah. there are a couple uh, being bidded out, and there are several more being readied out uh, uh, for uh, bidding. And I think that is the most important uh, uh, thing. We've solved the administrative bottlenecks. We have projects that uh, are whose feasibility studies are being prepared as we uh, uh, speak. And when uh, the term of the president ends in 2016, this will be the most successful ever uh, PPP program of any uh, country 
in the region, I think uh, that would be. You say of any country in the region? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's question short. Uh, Sir, you, when you were asked about the syntax measure, you did say that you're confident that it will be passed. Can you say the same thing for the reproductive health bill and the pending freedom of information bill? Thank you. Um, when, I ask, when I talk to the leadership of the houses, various members of Congress and, and the Senate, you know, I can go every time to them and say, this is my priority. Can you add this also to my priority list? Can you hmm. further add this? So at the present time, we need two no, that are very, very important. Yung AMLA, the third measure on AMLA is very, very important. Um, the syntax measure, again, improves uh, the economic figures. Then all the others, I think, have already are quite advanced. No? In, now I regret not having read the, the reports on the developments as far as the Responsible Parenthood Bill are concerned. I was told that there are uh, significant developments with regards to it. But unfortunately, uh, the amount of material that I had to go through yesterday, and that was not one of them that I was able to go through. I don't have the details of why, why, what the good news is. Mm -hmm. I will have to read it as soon as you excuse me from this venue. <laughs> so what about okay. the FOI? <laughs> so FO will, you I, FOI? I have to check on the status though, okay, mm -hmm. FOI. But uh, I think we've stated several That's months ago. Answer. Okay. I, I'm told that November 13, it will be reported out by the or there will be a decision within the committee by mm -hmm. November 13 on FOI. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, of course, we know uh, that. They, they, res they resume discussion. When they resume the sessions. After when, they, when, they re well, when they resume sessions, uh, it is expected that they will be able to finish and report it out of committee so with regards to FOI. So, sir, would you say that Kaya Pashama Pasab, under the, the present Congress, before they end the. Uh, the term in, in June. If I say that's the case, tomorrow I'll be labeled a dictator, dictating mm -hmm. to Congress when to do its job. No? Mm -hmm. If I don't answer it, there is, they'll, they'll say I'm not interested in the measure. Mm -hmm. so how should I answer it, Karen? Can I ask you a question? <laughs> thank you, okay, Karen. Thank you. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we thank the President for his time and for his okay. patience. Uh, thank you. We hope, uh, we hope to see you soon. So that ends the program. Lunch will be served.